feed it. To See him? Still? Oh my gosh! Oh my gosh! No way! No way! No way! No way! No way! Got him both of them, both of them. Get him in, get him in, get him in. Yes! Let's go! Let's go! <laughs> that was awesome. That was awesome. Man. How cool is that? Well, how's it going everybody and welcome back to Tyler's Real Fishing. Today's episode is going to be a swim bait master class, specifically talking about the giant swim baits. My guest on today's video and who I'm going to be leaning into for a lot of the information is Grant Langmore, a swim bait, I call him a legend even though he's younger than I am. He's Thank a, a swim bait legend here in the Austin, Texas area, has quite a few double digit bass and has a ton of helpful information to help you guys out there not only catch your first swim bait bass, but gain confidence in what can be a very daunting fishing topic. So get out a pen and paper, we have a ton of stuff to get into today. My name is Tyler Anderson and let's talk about it. What's going on guys, Tyler Anderson here. My goal on this channel is to help you guys become better bass anglers with every single video that you watch. And I know that a lot of my videos, especially this year with uh, the virus going around, were kind of you know based on beginners. So I wanted to help the beginner you know, gain confidence in catching their first fish on Texas rigs and, and Senkos and, and you know, chatterbaits, crankbaits. But this video is going to be a, a technical video. They're gonna have a lot of information. I'm guessing this is gonna be somewhere in the 20 minute long mark. And so stick with us, we have a ton of good information. And of course, I'm going to have my Google Doc out with all of the points. That way we're not rambling on about what this is. And so I've had the chance over the years, so hopefully you guys can't hear that chainsaw. Uh, I had the, years, yeah. the chance over the years to hang and fish with a lot of really good technical anglers, whether it's guys that are good at throwing a, a jerk bait or a drop shot. And I think one of the most envious of many anglers' uh, techniques to learn how to throw and catch fish on is a giant swim bait. A big old swim bait like yep. this one right over here called uh, the Hinkle Shad. The one Hinkle that shad. the one that when you're walking on the path, uh, old ladies walking their dogs are saying, "Are you fishing for sharks?" Are you fishing for sharks? They're like, "You caught one?" And you're like, "No, I didn't no, catch one." There's two huge hooks hanging off. And this, this is thing. my bait, uh, and so I kind of want to lean into Grant uh, for this master class uh, of this stuff. And so we're not going to go on this video into big paddle tail swim baits or what they call soft baits, um, like the Mag Draft and like the the Huddleston. Citizen Huddleston. Even though those are technically swim baits, we're talking about the glide bait in today's cat. Best one to fish. Yeah, in, in today's video, the the best one. Um, and so we're going to start off kind of asking the question of what is giant swim baiting? What do you, what, what's your definition on that? I would say the definition, so the way I see it, a huge bass is lazy. So, yep. you know, they, they would rather um, expend their energy going after a large bait fish than they would going through schools of shad, you know, competing with the smaller fish. So pretty much you're imitating the larger forage of bait fish. And you know, you might think, you might look at some of these baits and think a bass can't fit it in their mouth. Well, they can. They can. They can. Yeah. Even the little ones try. Exactly. And so I just think it's whether you're talking about gizzard shad, bluegill, crappie, those lures that you might think a chatterbait imitates a bluegill. Well, actually, you can throw an even bigger version of an imitation of that lure. And you'll lure. catch the same fish and bigger fish. And you'll catch oftentimes bigger fish. So that is kind of what giant swim baiting is. It is fun, but it's also incredibly heartbreaking at times. So we're going to go into that when it comes to, to fighting and landing that fish. Oh, no. Oh. And you're in, let's say, a, a pressured fishing situation. Uh -huh. Why would you choose to throw a big swim bait? Well, okay, so most of the guys you're gonna find on your lakes are throwing, you know, drop shot, Sanko, to, you know, just to catch fish. And I, and I, you know, I do it myself sometimes when I'm in a slump, but if yeah. you're going off after the biggest fish in your lake, you wanna do something different that from everyone else, so you, you throw a swim bait, which, you know, the majority, I'm not saying that people don't do it, but the majority of fishermen you're gonna find on your lakes are not fishing giant swim baits. Totally. Yeah. So it just, it gives those fish something they haven't seen before. Mm -hmm. You're not gonna get as many bites. Nope. So if you're going out there and you wanna take, yeah, you know, your, your dad or your girlfriend to catch some fish, throw, give, a Senko. throw a Senko, throw a drop shot. Do not give them a big swim bait. Yep. Uh, they're expensive. And of course, as we'll talk about, this is a, a technical thing that you really have to put time in to get confidence. I think it's more of a confidence it thing. It is, it is. I just, uh, I mean, as you know, most, most baits, 
you're gonna do better on if you have confidence in them. It's the same with the swim bait and all it takes is one bite on a glide bait to gain pure confidence in your bait and what you're doing. Totally. <clears throat> and so there's tons of different swim baits out there. Uh, you know, I'm sure, I'm sure I'll have a thing on Tackle Warehouse right now showing all the different glide baits that are out there. Uh, they're not all good, but you, you kind of talked earlier about, it's not necessarily about the price, Mm -hmm. It's about no. the one you have confidence exactly, in. Exactly, exactly. As long, you know, there, there's, as you go, you can, it's all about manipulating your bait to swim the way you want. So there's plenty of baits that you can buy straight out of the package that'll swim the way you think looks good. Yeah. Um, but as you grow and as you see how the fish react, um, you'll want a certain style of bait. So, you know, it, it's all about getting a bait that you can manipulate and tune into fishing the way that you want to fish it. Totally, yeah. And so it would be a mistake if we didn't talk about the actual gear that you can throw, what, a, what the swim baits are, and kind of some pricing categories before we hop into teaching you guys how to retrieve uh, and cast these lures. And so the first one being kind of like what's, in terms of a smaller, cheaper glide bait, uh -huh. what do you think is a good one for someone I would to say for, for your first glide bait ever, pick up a uh, S-Waver 200, I'm, as I'm sure pr probably plenty of viewers do use. Yeah. Um, and that I would consider a cover glide. So what a cover glide is, it's something that's gonna draw a reaction strike. So you're okay. fishing it around rocks and docks and logs and whatnot, and it's gonna be a bait you can fish slow, and then, you know, you say, okay, I think there's a fish right there. Yeah. Boom, boom. And you know, a fish is gonna see that and they're gonna hear it and they're gonna come out and eat it. So that I would consider a cover glide, a S Waver 200 or a Gantarel is a perfect starting bait. Okay. I mean, they're they're more expensive than most of your baits, but Yeah, still, what's the really, price range of those two? I would say a 200 size S Waver, which is around eight and a half inches is gonna be, you know, $40. Same with the Gantarel. Okay. So relatively, um, and expensive, but still yeah, somewhat Yeah, so pricey. people who are used to spending $6 on a square bill, $40 can seem like a daunting, daunting, a daunting purchase, uh -huh. but when it comes to swim baiting, that is the bottom of the that, barrel. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but it's still a good bait. So yeah, the uh, I'll have all these links below in the description. All the stuff we talk about. S Waver 200. You said Party Crasher. Is Party your Crasher is my favorite. favorite. It's got that color. Yeah, it's I, I don't even really know how to explain the color. It puts out a lot of flash. Fish okay. can see it. It's really good in clear water. It's really good in dirty water. Party Crasher S Waver 200 is. Okay, so I know Tactical Bass, and they've also talked about yep. the S Waver as a, as a good kind of lower lower tier swim bait. Yep, yep. But as always, we'd like to talk about the expensive stuff too. So not everybody can afford this, but it's kind of something to shoot towards. If you mm -hmm. if you start throwing the S Waver or a, a smaller, maybe the the Storm or Ashy Glide bait, it's like twenty seven dollars, and you start having success, and you're like, you know what, I kind of have an addiction for this thing. Oh yeah. And you want to try you something will. more expensive. What is that swim bait that, that starts getting into the higher, you know, so, expense? You areas? know, a lot of the baits on the market like will be 85 bucks. The problem you're gonna have, it's not even about the expense, yeah. it's about being able to find them. Okay. So, you know, I'm lucky enough to get my hands on a couple of baits that, that are tricky to get. Yeah. Not saying you can't, you just, you know, it's about the drops. Like a bait maker will post 30 baits and you gotta be lucky and get on that bait. Um, you know, some of them, like this bait here specifically is 150 retail. Um, I know some people resell them for three, four, five hundred. Yeah. Um, but you can find this bait right here, which is a nine inch Hinkle Shad for $150. $150. Yeah. And then you got, you got a bait like right here. This is a fish everything paperweight. This is a killer bait too, if you can ever get your hands on one, you which can. you can. Yeah. You just got to be tapped in. To, Follow the Instagram, they'll post a drop, um, and you just gotta hop on it and have your credit card ready and get it. This yeah. one's about 80 bucks, and this is one of the most killer cover glide baits, in my opinion, that's ever made. I mean, this is exactly what big bass wanna feed on, is a gizzard shad exactly. glide bait. Yeah, so a lot of these things you can't buy on Tackle Warehouse or yeah. on Bass Pro Shops. You, you kinda gotta buy them from the distributor themselves. Um, but if you can get your hands on them, they are really high quality. The one that I use is the, is the Piz Customs, P-A-Z-Z, -Z, incredible glide bait, but really, really hard to get a hold of. Uh, and it's just kind of one of those things where I would, I would liken swim baiting to almost like sneaker heads. Uh -huh. like you, yeah, you, yeah, you, it's you, hype. You line up, you want the uh -huh. swim bait. Some guys buy swim baits and don't even throw them. They just have them as like an investment, you know, item. Collect collectible. C collectible Same item. with people who buy, you know, hundreds of Yeezys. To yeah, yeah, totally, expensive shoes. So you talked about the difference between, or you, you mentioned the names, cover glide and then open, yeah, open, open water. water glide. Mm -hmm. So 
when you're fishing a glide bait, what do those two terms mean? So, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna line up an example. I don't know if the, there's a dock right here. So dock say, right there. So, yeah, <laughs> dock right there. So say it's summertime and you're thinking that the fish are gonna be on the docks. You pick up something that's gonna have a little bit tighter action um, and you're thinking, okay, it looks like there would be a fish on the corner of this dock. So you're gonna cast your glide and you're it's pretty much compare it to like a crankbait or something that's gonna draw a reaction strike. Yeah. So you pull it by that corner of that dock and then boom, boom, you speed it up and it's not, your bait's not going four feet either direction like a Roman made mother totally. or a Hinkle Shad would. Yeah. Um, they're, gonna, they're gonna see that bait, they're gonna hear it and they're gonna come out and hit it because it's not going so far away from them. Um, for example, if fish were tight to logs and you threw a Hinkle Shad over, not saying this can't work, um, something with a much wider glide and you do get it close to them but you shoot it out two feet one direction mm -hmm. they're gonna let it go they like i said big bass are lazy they don't want to move too much yeah to eat their their prey exactly so that's and, a, yeah and so so one thing one more thing i will say an open water is better so say you're fishing a creek mouth um there's fish on the bottom where you'd normally throw a soft bait a glide bait can do really well it's gonna throw a ton of flash being that this, the profile of this bait is so large. Yeah. It's gonna throw a ton of flash. It's gonna make a big splash. It's gonna draw up a bunch of fish. Um, some will bite it, some won't. Um, so you can fish it and just, they'll come up off the bottom. If they're suspending, they'll still bite it. It's You okay. can fish it in open water. Got it. So to somebody that's listening to this right now who may be wondering, well, he's talking about creek channels and docks. I fish ponds or I fish yeah. from the bank. Uh -huh. What kind of application can glide baits have for those types of anglers? So tip, okay, yeah, totally, totally understand. So typically yeah. um, a lot of ponds don't have gizzard shad, as I'm sure you'd know. Yeah. So a bluegill bait that you can fish fast and right under the surface of the water is gonna work. It's gonna be something they haven't seen as much. Yeah. So a Depths Bull Shooter 160 and a Jack All Gantarell. I always, if I'm throwing a glide bait in a pond, it's gonna be a bluegill glide. Yeah, yeah, because most um, of the time you don't have, really, besides, but the only shad you have are like minnows yeah, in a pond. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And so, yeah, if you're going for- Most of the times, there's always exceptions, you know. Totally. But um, most of the times, blue Gill is going to be the main forage for bass that do live in ponds. Cool. Yeah, and it's just a, it's, you have to you have to put time into it. That's one yeah. thing that I've learned about swim baiting is that whether you're in a lake, a pond, or a creek, or river, I mean, you're probably not going to get a big fish on your first day, and if you do, then you're hooked. Yeah, then you're, <laughs> you're hooked. All you're, it takes is one bite. Totally. I promise you, it's the most fun way to catch a big bass ever. And, and so That's we're right. going to have tons. I mean, tons. Maybe a few fish catches at the end of this video, and some B-roll shots. Maybe get some from Grant yep. and some other YouTubers uh, about glide bait catches. Uh, it's exhilarating, it's fun, and I hope this video kind of uh, encourages you guys to get into that. Now, the swim bait's important. You know, mm -hmm. the, the glide of it, knowing yep. how to work it, but I, what, correct me, correct me if I'm wrong, I think the second most important thing is your line. Yes, for sure. Because so, that connects exactly. your, your reel to your, your, uh -huh. uh, your to bait. Your, and you know, if you're throwing a $100 bait, you want to have your, your line in top shape. Yeah. You don't want to be having nicks all over the line. So yes, um, there's, there's plenty of scenarios to throw different kinds of line. Um, you know, if you're fishing heavy cover and your water's not 20 foot visibility like we have out here, braided line is a great option. Yep. One thing I will say is if you do, you know, buy a Depths 250, which is a great open water glide, braid is gonna be scary because braid um, prompts more backlashes than I would say fluorocarbon does. Yeah. Um, and you think a 65 pound braid, how is it gonna break? Something's gonna break if you wh try and whip your swim bait out there and your reel locks up, that bait is gone. Yeah. Monofilament, 25 pound monofilament for your bigger baits is perfect. 25 pound fluorocarbon is also really good. Um, I would say, you know, it is expensive and it's a little bit more risky than monofilament, but fluorocarbon's gonna be your median in between monofilament and braided line. Okay. Um, so I would recommend 20 pound fluorocarbon as, an, as a universal swim bait line. Got it, so 20 is fine. Yep. Always be checking your line, correct? Always be checking your line. That's one other thing. Yeah. Fluorocarbon, if you're running it over a bunch of rocks, we have zebra mussels here, which are super abrasive and will snap fluorocarbon like that. Exactly. Um, but for most most lakes, you know, your floor, 20 pound fluorocarbon is the way to go. Cool, cool. Uh, that's one thing that I know when I first started buying expensive swim baits, it wasn't even necessarily like the technique, it was I was afraid to throw it. Yeah. Because uh -huh. I, had, I had made the financial purchase and I was afraid. Yep. 
but you just have to you have to just get over that hump that yeah you're gonna be separated from a lot of swim bait fishermen if you're putting your baits in places that other people won't okay it, that's totally one of the ways you know you just gotta kind of i don't have a ton of money i i scrape to afford the baits that i do have i don't buy a ton of baits yeah but i put those baits i bang them off rocks i put them in nasty under docks and whatnot um that's going to separate you from a lot of those people who are worried to throw their swim baits. Exactly. Yeah. Now, when it comes to seasons, uh -huh. is glide baiting it an all year round? Now, we're in Texas. If yeah. you're watching this video, we live in Texas, and so our climate is generally hotter. Like, it's December 20th, and it's 9th right now, 70, and it's 70 degrees. Which so, does not help the fishing, in my opinion. No. So, I know that our weather doesn't always uh, apply to where you guys live, but at least, let's just talk about the south in general. Uh-huh. Is, is swim baiting an all year round thing? It can be used, it's an all year application. Okay. I would say you wanna focus on the times where the fish are looking to get big. Um, for example, fall before winter. I mean, they don't necessarily go into hibernation, but they get fat to be lazy okay. um, for the cold water months. Yeah. Um, Pre-spawn, late February is one of the best times because they're bulking before they go on their beds. Mm -hmm. um, and they want that big meal that's going to satisfy them but yeah. dead winter an open water glide at any cliff cliff wall or creek channel somewhere where you know big fish are if you pick up a big swim bait count it down till it's pretty deep and glide it back you can catch fish like that too uh -huh. spring I, you'd be amazed what um throwing a bluegill glide on a bass's bed would do oh, to a bass it, they it will makes smash angry. it yeah. yes so any any year, any time of the year, swim baits around docks in the summer too is great. Okay, cool. So really anywhere you'd throw in the summer or anywhere you throw all year round, yeah. you can just throw, you can throw a swim bait there. Yep, it's tr change out, try. Um, any Anyone who's watching this, try to anywhere you throw a chatter bait or something, pick up a swim bait and see what it can do because I promise you, you will not be disappointed. Exactly. Now when you're throwing a, a swim bait that is $100, $150, where should you not throw a glide bait. Are, uh -huh. there, are there any places that are that are you just kind of, maybe you catch one, but yeah. probably it's not risky. smart. Yeah. You know, I, I'm sure someone would ha have to say that there are places not to throw a glide bait. Okay. But like I said, if there are fish there, even if it's a nasty spot, throw it because those fish are gonna bite it and you just gotta put your trust in your gear. Um, and the cool thing about swim bait fishing is with an eight foot three extra heavy rod, you're the boss of the fish. Not all the time because yeah, they can't yeah. throw the bait. Of course. But it's not throwing eight pound line on a drop shot. You're the boss. You get that fish to the boat. He, you know, um, so I, I would say put it in the nastiest places you can that, you know, a frog or a chatterbait would work yeah. and, and you'll get the same results and better. Got it. Now when it comes to when it comes to wakeboard boats, we got one coming by. Oh. Now, when it comes to uh, glide baits, there are sinking and there are floating. Uh -huh. So, when do you use uh, both categories there? Um, you know, me personally, this is another this is another thing about glide baits that they won't do to anything else. Um, they see a nine inch glide bait coming a foot under the surface. They can be down ten feet or twelve feet. They're gonna see that bait. Yeah. And if they want to eat it, they will come up and eat it. Um, so I typically like to get my baits to suspend. I know it's tricky for a lot of baits, but you can always change out your split ring and your hook size to get that bait down. Just, okay. you know, a foot. There are certain applications, if it, if it is, they're on deep humps in the winter or summer, um, you know, you could use a moderate or a fast sink to get it down and they'll see it. Um, yeah. And clear water also helps. They'll, they'd rather come up a foot under when they can see the bait super well. If you're throwing muddy yeah. water, any kind of glide, a surface glide is really good, okay. a, a slow sink, whatnot. Now when it comes to grass, mm -hmm. I know that you know you could, you could categorize pads in like shallow grass in like the heavy cover situation. Yeah. So like, uh, should you be concerned about throwing a glide bait? In like, I mean, of course, in like a heavy hydrilla and yeah. foil. Um, Do you want to throw like a more of a floating one in that scenario? Yes, 100%. I mean, okay. um, not saying it won't work pitching in it into tight little spots where it is surrounded by grass, okay. but you're not going to get your full action out of your bait if you are just pitching it. And you know, it's got two big treble hooks hanging off it. You're going to catch a lot of stuff. Yeah. Um, so if you're fishing a grass line or some anything like that, a, a glide is a great way to go as long as you keep try and keep it out of the grass but i would say you know if they're if you do have a ton of hydrilla and you're like try and fish it closer to the surface okay cool yeah now last thing before we hop on the front deck and grant will show you guys how he works uh, a glide bait uh and of course we didn't talk about this at the beginning i'm saying he's an expert because he has 
eight fish over 10? Eight fish over 10. Eight fish over 10 pounds, seven of those being on a glide bait. Yes. I have zero fish over 10, zero of, <laughs> zero of those being on a glide. I've only caught a handful of sixes on a glide. So yeah. that's why I'm enlisting his help for this video because I still want to teach you guys. I, I, I just can't teach as well as he can in this yeah. topic. It, it's all, you know, it's just what I have confidence in. Yeah. Um, it's fun. It's super personal because you buy a bait and you make it your own. Exactly. Um, but I will say I have caught some really big fish on paddle tail. My biggest bass ever was on um, Huddleston. A Huddleston. Yeah. Yeah. Something that's coming across the bottom. But a glide bait by far and away is one of the the best ways to gain confidence in a bait, um, in swim baits and, and big baits in general. Yeah. Um, and it's the most fun. Exactly. By far. Yeah. Yeah. So when it comes to rod and reel, uh -huh. what's important when you're throwing? So the Hinkle is a six ounce lure. Yes. Six ounce lure. So what do you need? Uh, besides that 25 pound uh, floor car, uh -huh. 20 pound floor car, what do you need besides that to so, effectively throw fish it. and yeah, fish that and bait? Throw it. I have two examples of two different kind of rods that swim baits are super good on. Um, first being you have your parabolic rod, um, which is, is a very bendable, it acts as a shock absorber to fish. This is a Leviathan Omega eight foot extra heavy. This is one of the best rods on the market, in my opinion. The best rod on the market, in my opinion. Um, but you're gonna have, so parabolic means your whole rod bends. So, you know, the, it's gonna be different from your traditional. This is not parabolic. This has backbone and this has tip. Um, and you know, a lot of, there's a lot of different scenarios where different rods work, but I would say overall a parabolic rod is a really good way to go. Yeah. Um, you know, you're taking, a, when your whole rod bends, you're taking a lot of pressure um, off your rod because you know, if it runs, super hard this part of your rod's gonna bend and if it runs a little bit you know the whole rod it's a shock absorber okay um and casting is really nice nice hook setting is really nice with your bigger baits sometimes and if you want to boat swing fish get them in as quick as possible yeah your big you know broomstick is going to be the way to go but you always want to have some tip because like a crankbait um you know they're eating a treble hook bait you want your rod to load up Totally. when they eat that bait and sometimes people prefer the backbone just to get them straight to the boat and some people prefer this a parabolic rod um you know you can fight them a little bit harder and it, i feel like it keeps the hooks in a little bit better and longer so you're saying at least like a at least a seven six for like the smaller yeah. glide baits up to an eight eight and a half foot is yes. kind of your, your range yep, yep yep okay um and you want to find something with the soft tip and backbone I, i'd say parabolic rods are kind of hard to find in the lower um, lower end of nothing wrong with the lower end of rods. I my biggest fish actually came off a setup under two hundred dollars. Did it really? Yeah. Gotcha. Um, you know, if you start if you start wanting to get serious and luxurious with your swim bait fishing, you can always upgrade. Yeah. Um, these are great examples of upgrades. These are eight hundred dollar rods. This this bit this so this retail is two hundred and eighty. So okay. it's it's expensive. Yeah. But it's insanely well made it's personally built by eric gomez um and you know you're gonna have no problems you're gonna have a lifetime warranty this is their production label so okay. this is the label they sell out in you know um to the masses exactly this one in particular i'm all hooked up he custom made i'm assuming he he custom made this for my own for my own liking okay so this one is going to be a lot more pricey because it did take a lot longer to make um, this one in particular, I think, took a little bit over two months. Oh my gosh. It's got a carbon fiber sleeve. I know it does. Yeah, it's it's a sweet rod. I mean, yeah. check out that eyelet. It's just beautiful. It, it it's is, all yeah. It's all luxury. Um, totally. But you know, if you are su a super serious fisherman, especially throwing expensive baits, you do want your gear to be in the best shape that you can get. Yeah. You know? Exactly. So hopefully this hasn't been daunting to you guys. I know it's a lot of information and it's a lot of uh, things to think about spending money on. You don't have to spend a whole lot of money. You know, I'll, I'll link some some budget rod and reels down below uh, just to get you guys started. But this is for this video is for everybody from people getting into it to those who want to learn how to advance their swim bait game. This is a true beginner to advanced yeah. video. Yes. Um, sure. But of course, as always, I want to help you guys get into certain techniques. Mm -hmm. And so that's kind of kind of be focused toward that. And so we're going to hop on the front Deck real quick show you guys or have grant show you how to properly cast uh some different retrieves you can do with both the uh the open water glides and the structure yep. glides and then we're going to show you guys hopefully a big hopefully fish a big fish from today right. if not we have some other fish catches from glide baits yep. of some giant dang texas it's hit bass. or miss it's hit or miss but yeah. when it hits and it hits. it hits hard so yep. let's go on the front deck so first things first when when it comes to 
you know, fishing uh, glide baits specifically, you need to be able to know how to cast them. That's one of the most important parts, parts and will save you, um, you know, hundreds of dollars of baits. Really, all you want to do, I usually leave a couple feet of line out. Um, you know, right here, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to toss to this corner. Um, you want to let your rod load. You want to let your bait get to the back part of your cast before you swing it forward. It's not like a Cinco. You don't flip your bail and and whip it as hard as you can. You wanna really let that rod load up before you do throw it. Um, whipping a bait is gonna, you know, result in some backlash and in turn, that bait's gonna go flying. So, for example, I'll do a slow, kind of slow motion. I'm letting that bait load up and I'm just tossing it. And obviously keep your, your thumb on the reel. You don't wanna backlash and have a fish eat it and everything goes wrong. Um, and it's nice to be able to learn how to throw on both sides. I can throw this way and I can throw this way, um, depending on you know where people are on the boat and which side of the bank you're fishing. Um, but really, you just want to be careful not to whip it. Overhand can be sketchy if you're you know throwing it really hard, um, especially with braided line like I have. You do not want that that reel to lock up mid cast. Um, so you want to have your your tensions right. You know, not too loose, but not too tight. I would st actually start out throwing it tight until you feel comfortable um, as where you're fishing it. So as far as retrieves and reel go, this is an eight to one Tatula, um, 300 size. So you want to you want a reel with big gears that is actually designed to, to hold a lot of power, have a lot of torque. Um, so I would recommend 300 size. I personally prefer low profile because my hands are not that big and it fits in my hand better um and also you know you get the same stuff you get in a in a you know um a round reel as you you can get now nowadays in a low profile um also you will notice that a lot of round reels will not have the gear ratios um fit to throwing a glide bait i prefer a faster gear ratio eight to one can even be a little bit fast for most of you guys so i would say anywhere 7.2 to 7.4 is ideal because um you know the type of fishing with the cover glide you want to be able to work it perfectly with your reel you don't want to you know fish it too slow or fish it too fast so a seven is perfect um a lot of guys like to use their rod and sometimes you can manipulate that into the way you work your bait but really you know casting you want to be able to just glide it with your reel boom 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 um, and then you can slow it down and boom, boom, boom. Getting those those reaction bites on this and those real trops, boom, boom, is usually when those fish are gonna hit it. Um, and a fast gear ratio allows you to work it with your reel and um, a parabolic rod. When that fish eats it, it's gonna load up and then all you do is just lean into them and start reeling. Um, you know, sometimes you got thick wire hooks like this guy on the back right there. Um, and some people will tell you to really set your hook. But if you have braid and you have a, a, a good rod, all you gotta do is sweep into them just like you were fishing a deep diving crankbait and those fish are gonna be buttoned. Um, I prefer light wires because it does, it's easier to get hooked as you, you know, it, it's all, it makes sense. Light wires will, will slip in and out of the fish's mouths easier. So you, you're gonna require less of a rod, and less of a hook set. Um, but it all also comes down to how you want your bait to sink, suspend and whatnot. Um, but light wire, you know, as long as you're not trying to horse a 12, 13 pounder of the boat, what will hold up an owner ST 300 or 100 or whatever it is um, are really good, good hooks. These quads can even be good. I know some people are gonna hate on me for them, but they, they catch fish. They, they keep some fish buttoned. So really just a sweep set is one of the best ways to hook a fish on the glide bait. Um, you wanna, being that the bait is so heavy, um, a fish can use the leverage of the bait when they jump to throw it out of their mouth. I um, mean, you'd think, you know, these are huge trebles. Once they're hooked, they're hooked. Not true. You wanna hook that fish you want to stick your rod in the water and you know if that bait starts changing positions in their mouth they're a big bass's goal is to throw it and they're really good at what they do um so you want to keep your rod tip down and just grind them you do not want to lose any tension oh, oh. oh sh yeah. Yeah. oh yeah, yeah. 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 yeah.
Oh my. You know, swinging your rod all over the place can be really bad too because it is changing the, the hook placement. But if you can, prevent the bass from jumping as many times as you can prevent. A lot of people have, you know, a guy they're fishing with on their boat um, or whether it be a kayak, they'll have a net. Um, and so, you know, some people are, have mastered the skill of lifting their rod up and scooping it with the other hand. Um, if you got a stiff rod like this, this eight foot three with a lot of backbone, just swing them in the boat. If you have 25 pound fluorocarbon, the chances are you got that fish all the way up to the boat. You can pull them out of the water. Some really big fish, um, you know, won't let you do that. So a net is, is a very smart thing to have on your boat at all times. Um, and you know, it's the same motion. If you got a fish on a spinning rod, you lean back. It really, that can be the trickiest part, but you just gotta do your fish, your best to get that fish in the boat. Um, and so a net is a really good way to do it. Another very important thing is having a good pair of polarized sunglasses. Um, I actually couldn't find mine. These are my dad's, so don't tell him I'm using them. But um, it's good to be able to see into the water because a lot of glide bait fishing is visual. Um, I would say clear water is where it really excels and you wanna be able to see those fish coming behind your bait. Um, so looking in the water and seeing those fish behind your bait is very important um, when fishing your bait and being able to tell how to manipulate it into getting that fish to strike. If he's, if he's super slow behind it, sometimes you wanna slow it down and then speed it up. Sometimes you wanna start burning it and they'll eat it. But it is important at all times of the year to be able to see those fish. I know it's scary seeing a 10 pound bass come behind your bait, but the more followers you get and the more fish you see come behind your bait, um, the be the more calm you're gonna be when that situation happens. Good one, dude, he's coming at it. He's coming at it. He's coming at it. Jerk it, give it, give it a good pop, give it a good pop. He's going at it. Pop it, pop it hard. I'm supposed to work it pretty hard. Kill it, kill it, kill it, kill it, kill it. Work it, yeah, it's a big one. Kill it. Pop it, let it sit, let it sit. Jerk it. Oh my, it's, I don't want to move. I don't want to move. It's so big, it's so big. And one of those times, the fish is gonna eat it, everything's gonna go right. Um, and it's also incredibly cool seeing a fish come 20 feet away for your, that's sitting over here, your bait's right here, and he comes all the way over for it, and you watch the whole thing happen. So it's nice to have a pair of sunglasses. It's actually very crucial um, because you, you know you have to see those fish coming behind your bait, in my opinion. Well, that was a lot of information. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Again, we have some fish catches coming here at the end of the video, but if you guys have any questions about swim baiting, I will leave, of course, Grant's YouTube channel. You have a channel now, right? I do have a channel. He has a channel, not a whole lot of content on there, but as soon as he uh, starts catching more big fish right now, he'll post more, and of course, his Instagram. Uh, I'm just gonna put him on the spot. If you got questions about swim baiting, I mean, that's kind of his thing. So shoot him a message and I'm sure he'd like to help you guys out. There's definitely a learning curve when it comes to this thing. And that's why I spend time with anglers that are better than myself at certain things. So if I want to learn how to throw a swim bait better, I'm going to hang out with Grant. If I want to learn how to catch smallmouth better, I'm not going to hang with my Texas buddies and go catch smallmouth. I'm going to go fish with somebody that lives in Minnesota so they can teach me how to do that. And that's one of the things that I think is very important about any sport, especially one like this bass fishing where it's so many different technical things is that you have to spend time and kind of be underneath people uh, that, yeah. that you can learn from that are better uh, than you at what you're doing. You learn something new from every single fisherman you go out with. Exactly. Whether you realize it or not, you do. Exactly. And so that is why I film with people like Grant that can help you guys and myself become better bass anglers because while you may see me as this you know high above youtuber that's teaching you guys three times a week i also am on this journey with you guys i just maybe a few steps ahead and that's what i'm sharing with y'all so let's see some big old glide bait fish catches and we'll see you next time on trf eat it see him still oh my gosh oh my gosh no way, no way, no way, no way, no way. Got him both of them, both of them. Get him in, get him in, get him in. Yes! Let's go! Let's go! <laughs> that was awesome. That was so epic. That was awesome. Man. <laughs> How cool is that? Oh, we got a water spot on the lens. We got a lot of water on the lens. <laughs> That's amazing. Look at that one, dude. Big glide bait. She came up and just crushed it. There's probably how many how many fish were with her, Tyler? Two or three. Yeah. 
Biggest one came up, made it right at the boat. Yeah, let's get a weight on that one. Right. I thought she was bigger than that. I did too. I thought she was like an I eight. I thought she was like an eight, yeah. Um, where'd I I'm going to say like six, oh. eleven. All right. <laughs> that was one of the cooler swim bait bites I've had. Yeah, that was legit. Yep, six. 68. 668. Uh -huh. Okay. 668. That's like, dude, that's like a 611. I know. That's a big that's one. A big one. Should I let it go? Yeah. She ready. Eat it. Oh my gosh, did y'all see that? Did y'all see that? That's another freaking, that's another six or seven pounder. Oh, she's still on it. Eat it. Oh. This is some of the most insane footage I've ever seen. I've never seen anything like this in my life. Got her. Yeah! Oh my gosh! Oh my gosh! Oh my gosh! Oh my gosh, I cannot believe that! Can you believe that? Oh my gosh! You think that bait has some pull? Oh, oh. That's a that's an eight pounder. She's skinny, but good grief! Oh, oh my gosh. Yeah, we're recording. Look at that pig. Look at that pig. I cannot believe what just happened. You got one? Yeah. Oh my goodness. I don't know what to do. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. My fish does not matter. 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 Does not matter. Right, here we go. Yes! Ace! Let's go! Let's go! Yes. Oh, on the Gantorel. Okay, well, okay, okay. Uh, you know what? Here, here, hold the net real quick. I'm just gonna, for the safety of my fish, put it in the water. <laughs> nice fish. Oh, but Ace. Oh my goodness. What did you just catch? Whoa. Oh my. I told him he should throw on a top water because he's not catching any fish, and he stayed committed to it. Oh, oh yes. Let's freaking go. Oh man. Yes. That is that cool. Sideways his mouth. Look at that. That is awesome. Oh, oh yeah, don't hurt yourself. All right. This is a crazy day. These fish are in a feeding mood, and I don't know what to say. What is that? Eight, you think? Seven? Oh, it might just be. It, it doesn't. It's kind of skinny. Yeah, it's skinny. It's a skinny fish. Man, oh. that's a nice one. Yeah. Let's go, baby. Sick. Want to weigh it? Six four five. Nope. Six four. Yeah, six four five. Six four five. Man, these fish are looking so much bigger. But uh, that is definitely a nice fish. Sick. Two six pounders of five and a bunch of threes. I don't believe. That's I'll take six. it. Yeah, I don't believe that's six. That's that scales a, off. I think it scales a little bit off. We're just gonna get some pictures of it and let it go. So we're gonna go seven on that. It the scale we think is a little wrong, but it, she she's kind of empty, a little bit long and skinny. But sweet fish, dude, on the jackal ganterel. Yeah. Let's get a release on her. It good. It's not underwater. Yeah, nice job. Dope. Boom. That fish absolutely destroyed it. But as I talked about earlier, the hookup ratio is so bad that fish did not get hooked up. And I'm actually very, very glad because of that. Because if I think if I had hooked this fish, it would have been more of a foul hook than it would be a fair hook but it is so cool to see the fish just lash out in the middle of nowhere. He just sees the big lure falling out of his peripheral vision and he just slams it. Now, like I mentioned, when I'm fishing for bedding bass, oftentimes I'll use a giant glide bait or a swim bait in general to get the fish aggravated and then throw a lure like a drop shot or a Texas rig in there that has a lot larger chance of actually getting a good hookup. But in some scenarios, this fish attacks it, hooks himself, and you have no choice but to catch this fish. And so that's how this video is going to end right here.
That fish attacked the glide bait on its way in. I couldn't shake the fish off and so ended up catching this fish. It was about a four pound female. I'm gonna check it out one more time. It comes in from the left. The fish sees it and just attacks it. And that right there is the perfect hook set that you want. Right in the middle of the mouth where that fish was not foul hooked and I end up catching that fish.